I was in the company yesterday afternoon, albeit briefly, with uh, the Leeds United owner, Andrea Radrizzani, very impressive gentleman. And uh, he wanted to speak to me on TalkSport. He was wanting to respond to last week's Twitter storm when he questioned the legality of the relationship between the super agent, the man who looks after Cristiano Ronaldo, George Mendes, and the championship leaders right now, Wolverhampton Wanderers. And he started our chat with an apology. To First of all, I want to to apologize to Walter Anton if somebody has taken this tweet as a, something to deny their, their success or their uh, on the pitch and their quality. Uh, nothing to do with that. I, they have they played a great game against us. They are a good team. They they are with a uh, merit uh, on top of the league. So they are doing exactly what I wish to do for, for Leeds United and uh, congratulations to them so far in the season. My tweet uh, in a moment of frustration was also done on purpose to have uh, attention on something that I try to raise as a subject to the league and other clubs owner all over the season, since the beginning of the season, because uh, I'm, I'm not uh, accusing anyone, but I would like to have a clarification on the rules. And the rules? Yes. And, and what do, you, do you think the rules have been bent here in some way or they've been manipulated in some way? Because your point is George Mendes is involved with Wolverhampton well, and he two, gets access two, to all these super players. There are two points. First of all, uh, the rule number four of the FA regulation uh, that I accepted in the moment I, I invested in, in Leeds United uh, state that any uh, in, in intermediary um, should be uh, have, um, should have share interest with the owner of a club. So, and uh, in, I've been aware reading on, on media like uh, newspaper website, New York Times or other Chinese uh, uh, media companies that Fosun in the past invested in uh, uh, Justifude as well as Wolves. So, I'm confused about the application of the of the, uh, the clause number four in this case, mm -hmm. or maybe it's not true they invested or they changed the comp. I don't know. Um, I, I I would like to have a clarification about those. Secondly, um, nothing to do with the owner with the ownership of agency is about and another part of the of the regulation talk about influence of intermediary in in the in the management of the team. And um, obviously, there is when uh, you work with the uh, top uh, player agents, uh, and there are probably three in the world that they control um, more than 60% of the pl top players or more. Obviously, this, these agents they have very deep relationship and uh, influence with the top European clubs because they bring them a lot of players. It's normal. It's normal. So if uh, uh, to facilitate uh, the opportunity to have uh, top good players from top teams, like th this year was the Hampton, uh, good for them, acquire on loan with mandatory option to buy in case of promotion, players from Porto, Atletico Madrid, Monaco, I mean big European clubs. Uh, um, so, and the year before some as well, with like Elder Costa and then he, they bought after one year. Yeah. So if that's possible, I would like to do the same, because I have, a, I mean, I, I have a relation with uh, Jorge Mendes, with other top agents, so I mm mean -hmm. Raiola, Stellar, I have a lot of good long-term friendship with top agents in the world, so if this is okay, I, I would like to do the same, so, because so, uh, so I think... you want to do the same, yes. and if the regulations... Allow, the I'm very happy. If the regulations exactly. allow for them, they should exactly. allow for you. If that's the, the... It's fine, I'm happy to to move on in order to, to build a better squad uh, if possible. And even regardless the the relationship with agent, I also have personal relationship with uh, uh, important club, so I will try to leverage my relationship as well. That's for sure, I think, shouldn't be any problem in terms of law. Uh, so I would like to have clarification, because also it's not only about clarification on the EFL rules, but what also is the idea and the thinking of the Premier League. Because if we work in a, in a championship, 
uh, with some rules that they are not then accepted by the Premier League, then there's no point to do it <laughs> because they, all of this is uh, aiming to 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 um, to be working for to be in the Premier League. Now we're going to hear more from uh, Radrazani, the other side of news and sport at half past twelve. But Mickey, quite clearly, he was saying there, look. It's working for well. It's it's been good enough for Wolves, mm-hmm. albeit their lead at the top has been cut somewhat, as mm-hmm. as you just identified to me. Mm-hmm. But if it's good enough for them, it should be good enough for for Leeds United. He mm-hmm. wants to get involved. He's very ambitious for this football club. Yeah. He wants to further their cause any chance he can get. And all he's looking for now is clarity on the rules. Yeah. Well, he's looking for clarity on the rules because um, obviously he wants success for Leeds United. They've been, uh, you know, they've been waiting for this for, for many, many years since yeah. they started drifting down the leagues. But I, it's the timing for me. Why, why is he doing it now? You know, why did you not do this at the beginning of the season? Because he knew that Wolverhampton Wanderers appointed Mendes and he was bringing in the players because he's got a vast amount of players. But then I asked the question is, did the players still want to go to that club? You have to still entice those players to come and play for your club. Wolves have been able to do that. Mm. Now, if he wants to go down, yeah. and we're talking about uh, Rad Rosini here, if he wants to go down the route of bringing in that type of player to get them success, then he should have done it at the beginning of the season. Not talk about it now. That uh, It's just a timing for me. Just a handful of games to go, Bob. And also, he's got to, as Mickey says, he's, he, he's got to entice yeah. them to the championship. Two things. Uh, firstly, about the time, and you're absolutely right. But I'm glad he said what he said. I'm glad he changed his, uh, you know, from what he was saying last week. Because the Leeds fans last week were saying, mate, we don't want you moaning about Wolves. We want you getting us up there with Wolves. Yeah. Now, that is yeah. what he's saying. Yeah. You're exactly right. Whatever happens at Wolves... It's not these these players aren't on a conveyor belt just being bussed into the club. Exactly. That's right. They're being invited to the club, they're being enticed to the club and, and they're being told we'll play a certain way and we'll give you a certain you know We were hearing moments ago, Mickey Gray, Bob Mills, myself here in studio and yourselves out there listening intently to Andrea Radrazani. And maybe that rule change that he wants uh, to be looked at, and I'm sure it will be looked at. But Leeds United, it hasn't worked out in the way that Radrazani must have hoped for this season. And they're up against it big time. It's looking like they're going to miss out on promotion this time around. I was speaking to Radrazani in his offices in Mayfair right here in London. You also must be frustrated by the performance and the results of your team, Andrea, because a team like Millwall has the second lowest budget for player purchase. Mm -hmm. And I think Leeds United is the seventh highest. And yet, they're higher than you in in, in the championship table. Yes, luckily we we are a club in the championship that beside the one with the partial uh, payment from the Premier League, um, from the Premier League relegation, we are lucky enough that we have good revenue stream and also we have done investment to, um, we we are a solid, in that sense, but unfortunately, we are not um, re- reaching results that we aim so to be in the playoff. We have done until half of the season. I think the team w- was put together new in the summer, did quite well until the end of December, and uh, I was pleased with the result. To be fair, in the first year with many new players, 15 new players, be, be, and a new coach, a new owner, be in the top six most of the season until the half season, was a good result. I was uh, pleased with that. Unfortunately, in January, we we ruined everything. I in my I have my personal opinion that I'm happy to share. I think the crucial time, the crucial moment, was uh, the week from 23rd December to the 1st of January, because in that week we had four games, and we play all the games with the same 11 or 12 players, and this basically kill the players on the pitch and kill also the other one yeah. because they, they they were not considered any minutes, not enough minutes in the crucial moment of the season in, uh, when we had four games like everybody else in, the, in eight days. Then the next game in the Cup, Newport, we went to play with full 11 players asking the same player that they were totally ignored for the four games in the league to play in the cup against second division cup obviously the commitment and the was not there because they were not considered before so in that two weeks i think we we killed the season in my opinion and that's what brought me then to change uh, the leader and uh, we need time we need to learn from our mistake Firstly, myself, which I, I'm the first responsible for this situation, and uh, and the, my management, and uh, 
the players, which also they have a big part in this result because, uh, I mean, we give them everything possible to, to just focus on, um, on the football. As a club, we support them in everything. We gave them long-term contracts. We support them going in the season, in, um, pre- in off-season camp in Spain. We did everything they wanted, but we, we didn't get back their commitment, their passion and the spirit, particularly in the last game. I can mention the most important game. We, we played very poorly. It was against Middlesbrough away. And for me, it was the bottom of the season because uh, no commitment, no passion, no spirit. So I'm... Um, I don't want players in my team and representing Leeds United with, in, with, with this behaviour. So I hope they can learn as well and they can be here with, with me next year playing better and with more commitment. The, the, these are strong words, aren't they? I mean, Leeds United are 13th at the moment. Have you given up on promotion? I think this year uh, we, it's possible to think about promotion. We need to play the next uh, 10, in 10 games. Um, showing the spirit and passion that we miss it and show the fans that we need the respect. That's what we need. And I'm happy to meet the player face to face and tell the same because they, they need to know what is the situation for the club, what the club think about the season. These are strong words, Andrea, for the Leeds United players. But as owner, you, you feel you're quite justified to deliver these strong no, words. I'm, I'm the first to be, to be taking the responsibility and be questioned about the season. And I take the responsibility. I made mistakes. We made mistakes, uh, the management, me for, sh- for, sh- for sure as a, the first uh, representative of that club and uh, we need to understand which mistake we've done and try to don't do it. M- me first and the, the, the rest of the management and the players, everybody, we are in the same boat so we need to work solution to be better club together. So the new man in charge is Paul Heckenbottom, Andrea. What does he have to do to show you that he is the man long term because so far some highs, but some lows too. I mean, I'm pleased with his choice, particularly with his leadership and his uh, communication skills and, and motivation. Uh, obviously, like everybody, need to prove that he, he, he deserves this club, uh, including myself, as I just said before about the players. He's on the same boat. He needs to prove himself. But, but I'm convinced he can be a good coach for the club. Even though he's young and he maybe my lack of a bit of experience, he can close this gap with... Uh, motivation and leadership that he has already shown in the training session and um, hopefully he will get better results in the next games. The fans expect so much. So if it's not going to be this season, if this season it's too late to go up, can you assure them that everything will be done to bring Premier League football back to Elland Road? Only thing sure is dead in this world. So uh, I can assure anything. I will do my best as I always have done. And uh, I will try harder and harder as, as, with all my efforts to, to achieve what is fans' dream, which is my dream too. Andrea Radrazani telling it how it is at Leeds United right now. Tell it like it is. Don't be ashamed. Let your conscience be your guide. But I. No, deep down inside of me, I believe you love me, forget your foolish pride.